35 years of delivering muscle cars to our customers that they love and expect from us. Um, as you can see, the exterior styling is extremely aggressive and muscular. That was our goal. It starts with the uh, aggressive grill, the, the dropping fender line that rolls back into the rear haunch, and the car basically looks like it's ready to pounce and tear up the road. You guys are going to find out in the next day and a half that she will deliver on that promise. Um, one thing you're going to notice specifically when you're driving the car is the dramatic improvements to NVH. We removed all the noise, vibrations, vibrations and harshness that you don't want in the vehicle, but we made sure that we maintain all of the Mustang characteristics that you do want. When you start it up, you're going to hear the Mustang rumble that you expect. When you ask for power, it's going to give it to you, and then she's going to let you know that she's giving it to you. So we made sure that we maintain what makes the Mustang a Mustang while refining the vehicle. And this is undoubtedly uh, uh, the best balance of power and refinement that we've ever done. When you go in on the interior of the vehicle, it's going to continue to communicate that refined strength that this vehicle has. It's unmistakably Mustang when you go inside, you'll see all the cues inside that, that, that you're going to expect from a Mustang, but you're going to see quality and execution like you've never seen before. It's world level qualities of craftsmanship. From the material selections that we've got, to the way that we've actually brought the parts together and, and, and taken all of their variation and driven it out of the eyesight of the, uh, of the occupant, the vehicle is absolutely world class. Um, you're going to see inside, and Tom's going to talk a little bit more about it, some of the features and, and uh, uh, content that are inside this car that, again, have never been inside a Mustang before. So we're going to take you through all those and go through each one of them. You're going to see that, pay attention to the detail, because we have. We've paid attention to detail on the exterior and the interior. When you're driving the car, I talked about NVH, you're going to notice that the wind noise is at segment leading levels of wind noise. And what we've done is we've paid attention from the front of the vehicle all the way to the back removing all of the, the things that get in the way of, uh, and cause turbulence and cause the wind noise. So if you look at the front of the vehicle starting in the back, we removed the antenna from the front fender and we moved it and we put it in the back. We've taken the washer nozzles off of the hood and we put them on a leaf screen. We've got flat wiper blades to allow the wind just to scoot right past them. And the side mirrors spent tons of hours in the wind tunnel, not only reducing the coefficient of drag, but making sure that we made those so that we didn't create any turbulence and, and, and again, reducing the wind noise. So you're going to see a dramatic improvement in the overall quality of this vehicle. When you go on the inside paying attention to detail, you're going to see that we have paid attention to every detail, including the way we've executed, the, the, even down to the buttons. You'll see that we've, we've put Mustang, uh, the symbols are actually the, the rear end of the Mustang. Um, taking some of the styling cues from the exterior into the interior, the exhaust pipes actually were, were the inspiration for doing the registers on the IP. The IP is a single, is, is a one-piece IP soft uh, TPO, and that's enabled us to further refine the vehicle as we've removed all squeaks and rattles that we normally would have as you have multiple piece IP. It also allowed us to get that execution that I talked about before. Um, so with that, I'm going to have Tom take you through some of the more technical details, but again, fun, fast, and affordable. We believe that this thing will, will overachieve on every one of those elements. All right. Uh, so most of the stuff I'm going to talk about is actually on these little flags. So if you miss something, feel free to look at them, or you can talk to myself or Dave or Kevin or whoever. Um, this this is building on a great car. The 2005 car is a super car. It was a great car, and what we're doing is we're making this more Mustang. It's just it's better, and it's building on that. If you guys don't know, I just want to mention that the, the 05 car has won the JD Power Appeal uh, three years in a row. It's a, a super high score, you know, consumer reports, so quality is right there. But when you look at this design here, the one thing we were able to do, like Dave said, by managing the way we, the, the wind goes, and by on the V8 putting an underbody aero shield, we were able to reduce coefficient of drag by 7%. We were able to reduce the front lift on the V8 by 23%. So I know almost all you guys understand this, but that's a big deal, 7% uh, reduction of drag just for, for higher, easier running, and for the 23% front lift is great for front stability and stuff. So um, on the V6, it was a little bit less. It was 4% improvement and a 35% uh, improvement on the front lift. But anyway, V8, 7%. The wind, like Dave mentioned some of this stuff on how it was managed. Our exterior uh, style uh, design <coughs> person, manager, actually was an aero engineer, so he worked a lot with us just in the way all this transition was occurring and things, just to make sure that the, the car sailed through. 
So with wind noise, we were able to re improve our wind noise by 12% is what it was on this car and 15% on the convertible. That's by making sure the wind you know, flows well over the car. It's also by adding some sound package in some certain key areas inside the car. And then it's by managing the way you do the ceiling around the windows. You guys can move closer to the car if you want to. Um, and we're going to open it up. But So three and a half, or 12% uh, on the, the coupe and 15% on the convertible as far as improvement on wind. Um, when you talk about power on the V8, I'm going to pop the hood here just so you guys can see what's in there. What we've done on this car is we've, we've got, an, we've moved to a front feed uh, air intake system. In the past Mustangs, um, we were grabbing air from underneath this, in this wheel well. So if you were driving around the street or it was a hot day, it would be a little bit warmer air. It wasn't right out front. Now we're grabbing air from right here. It's coming into this air box. And the difference between uh, grabbing out there and grabbing here is about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. On a street start, that's about a 0.3 second, zero to 60 time improvement. So it's quite significant. So we, we just uh, as far as that number might not get in one of your magazines, but for, it, it might also get in some of your in someone else's magazine. These street starts important. This intake system here is the lowest flow intake system uh, loss that we've ever had. So this is this is the freest flowing system we've had, and I will challenge the aftermarket people to match it. it it's it's awesome. So with this low flow system and bumping the. Uh, engine speed 250 rpm we were able to up our horsepower from 300 to 315 horsepower and go from 320 foot pounds of torque to 325. we also are running a uh, dual mode calibration so you can run this car on premium or on regular fuel or anything in between it'll adjust the timing to spark all this stuff until it gets the maximum uh, value mainly for torque so if you run premium you're going to fatten up that torque curve between, say, 1,000 and 3,000 RPM, which just gives it a better feel about town. Um, the exhaust system and the intake system. Um, it's important I, in any car, but in a Mustang especially, um, when you hit the, the gas, you go. You feel it, but we also want you to hear it. Um, like Dave said, we kind of quieted the car down in certain ways for cruising and in, in certain frequency ranges, but we wanted to make sure you still experience the Mustang uh, growl and all that. And we've actually in, added this thing right here, which is called an induction sound tube. And it's when we shortened up the, the intake system here to get the cold air, we lost some of the, the sound quality. We had to add it back in, and this thing's actually piping sound right into the into the chamber, or you know, where the, the driver and the passenger sits. We've upped our exhaust sizes from uh, three to three and a half on the V8 and two and a half to three inches on the V6. So what you're getting is you're getting a good sound quality both out of the exhaust and on the intake. So um, we think people when they drive it they're going to hear it. When you're going up these canyons you're going to you'll notice oh yeah I hear this I hear this and uh, we like it we think it delivers. Um, I'm not, I'll, I'll just tell you on the V8, we offer a 331 axle ratio, and then you can go up to a 355 axle ratio. You can get a 373 rear axle ratio package, which includes an upgrade on the front brakes. So we have good, we have good axle ratios, which give you punch. Still offered with five speed automatic and five speed manual. No one's mentioned this, but these cars do come in coupe convertible and a glass roof, and, and there is a glass roof a few of them running around. If you haven't been in, been, been in one, make sure to get into it because it really opens up the cabin quite a bit. Um, so anyway, I talked about the power, but I, I guess I also want to talk about the weight a little bit. Um, in terms of tires and wheels, we've gone from, in model year 10 on the V6, we had 16 and 17s. So we've gone to 17s and 18s, and the V8 used to be 17, 18. It goes to 18, 19. But with that, even with the wheel size increase, um, the V8 only gained 15 pounds. The V6 gained 35 because we actually added a rear bar on the, or the v, on the V6 it gained 35 because we added a rear bar to it. But, so we've maintained our weight at a good place 
and what it does is it, it th this car is well balanced and it, it's uh, the curb weights much lower than some of the, the new cars that are coming out in this segment so we think we have a definite advantage there 15 pounds um, talking about the chassis setup um, the tires are all new the tires are a key thing to a car of course these tires have more wet grip more dry grip than the old cars that and that gives us better acceleration and braking and lateral capability um, our all season 19s are letting this car hit about 0.9 lateral G which is pretty it's really good um, what we did is we've, we've changed the way we sprung the car. We're, we're springing it, or we, we've upped our spring rates, okay, and we've increased our damping. And by doing that, we're able to give the car um, better control when going over primary inputs. And with the tires and the way that we're able to do the damper tuning, we've been able to um, not actually, we've improved our harshness and improved little tiny inputs. So we've made the car more comfortable and more engaging. Our uh, steering is more precise. The understeer gradient's dropped. The uh, roll gradient has dropped due to the springs. So we have less roll, we have less pitch during braking and um, uh, acceleration. What in some ways we've done as a reference would be say, take the V6 of today is like the V8 was in 09 and we've taken the v8 and we've moved it up to be beyond where we had the bullet so definitely what we want to do is we want people to feel good about driving this car we want them to smile we want them to to really like it to have a lot of fun just to to go there um, something that this car doesn't show but with all 19 inch tires and wheels um, we're putting a tower to tower brace across here which gives some some lateral stiffness as well as some torsional rigidity so that's something also in the chassis in the chassis we also have added um, all cars now come with standard ABS standard traction control low and high speed and advanced track and that's our electronic stability control system um, you can turn the system completely off you can turn the traction control off or you can run the system on and then on the V8s, um, on the premium models, we're, we have something called sport mode. And, and when you're at the track tomorrow, or even when you're driving today or tomorrow, you can, you can check those out if you want. But the sport mode just lets the car hang out, hang out more. So if you're at a track, um, you can put it in there, and if you get way out, it'll bring you back in. Otherwise, it'll let you hang it out a bit. So that's the first time we've had that on the Mustang, and we think that it'll just give people, especially in, in kind of uh, rainy or wet conditions, just a, a more comfortable uh, and higher confident feeling. So, um, talking about the interior, and I guess if, if you guys, you know, you can look in here one by one, or open that door just so you, there, both doors are open. Um, you know, like Dave said, we've done a lot of materials upgrades on this car. 